Hello. Thanks, guys. Um, so Project Utopia is a economic and environmental build system that focuses on sustainability, environment and economics. The current program that we exist within in construction is all about economics, so it's all about scalability and affordability, which is how the profits have been yielded over development to date. Now, looking into the future and stepping forward, we have environmental factors. I was talking to Alex at Geovation just yesterday, and what price do we now put on the environmental factors and the cultural factors that come with it? So when you look at the scale of environmental and economic building, scalability and affordability are key, but also in process to this, the environmental factors, the social integration. Here we go. So the problem, the problem is, is that we have 25 current layers inside any development construction program, which is the traditional norm. But what we need to do is bring that forward. This current development method and land banking and private policy has looked at us in a deficit over the last two, 10 years of a 1.28 million home deficit whilst our population jumps up 5.1 million. So what is the solution to this problem? Now, we're here to talk about modular, but actually we're here to talk about modern methods of construction. We're here to talk about environmental programming and climate change. As everybody knows, we've just entered a state of emergency. Whilst importing products and goods seems good, did you know that 36% of all CO2 is released from the construction industry through the supply chain and through the concrete itself? We need to look at alternative methods and local production. So what is Project Utopia? Now, Utopia stands for Economic and Environment Utopia. A utopia isn't seen as, as, as a feasible program. But when you look at social acceptability and you look at sustainability, you look at reducing the CO2 point from production manufacturing and you look at social integration, that's culture globally. That's also looking at technological factors and future generations. And then you combine the traditional methodologies of scalability and affordability. The only way to achieve these goals is to combine sectors. We aren't just prop tech. We are construction technology, we are energy technology, and we're intelligent technology. So we have to combine products and we have to smoothen the process. You've all heard of vertically integrated before. We're holistically integrated. We look at the technology and we manufacture said technology. We look at the design and we put together said designs. We distribute those locally for a local infrastructure and then we construct them. So conventionally where you'd have a build in 25 weeks, you build one in four. Now I've got a couple of exclusives today. This week, I've landed from South Africa yesterday and we as Utopia are the first company in history to build an energy positive, smart building that's hurricane proof, flood proof. We did the superstructure in three hours in the Namibian desert and we are starting an infrastructure network program that will enable poverty and shanty replacement housing from West Africa in the Walvish Bay port, going across Zambia, Botswana, South Africa, and ending in Mozambique. So unfortunately, there's a lot of videos to play. Anyone that's resourced or interested in the videos and information, we can play. But I'd like to run through this quickly because I know we are behind on time. So the systems, the ranges, how do we develop eco cities of the future? You've seen what sectors we're breaking into. So we have to look at homes, we have to look at apartment blocks and high rises, and we have to look at schools. And by doing these and focusing on other commercial sectors, you're able to create the turnkey modern method of construction solution to development and programming. This is the e-affordable unit I just mentioned. We built a 63 square meter, not 61, 63 square meter unit. The build time was four hours, one hour lunch break. We have video evidence of this as of last week and it's the first of its kind in history. The turnkey materials included intelligent lighting, included solar panels, including a solar geyser, a passive, which means it had a 0.13 U value and air tightness, passive standard. In addition to that, we included all of the ANSIL technologies that enabled us to make it hurricane proof, flood proof and earthquake proof. And we delivered this on the ground with six local people trained for less than 15,000 pounds. Why are we as a country importing technologies when they're right here on our doorstep? the technology itself. So what is this incredible thing that we're all talking about? How does it work? We have a three-tiered system as Utopia. We have exclusive IP, stuff that we've developed in-house, stuff that we've invented to create the world a better place. Then we have the second tier. We have our key supply tech partners. Our key partner in heat and ventilation cooling is the world leading system in Daikin, 17.5 billion global infrastructure. And then we have a number of interior technologies that enable our smart systems, that enable our livability. These are IKEA, these are Samsung. So we're working with the world's leading brands to bring their technologies in conjunction with our technologies 
to create the future of sustainable, economic and environmental building. So what is the construction tech? What is this hurricane proof material? It's called four wall. We just had a 2000 home production facility go online. We have met with Prince Abdullah Al Sabah, who is the Prince of Kuwait to distribute across the Middle East. We are flying to California at the end of this year to distribute to California. I recently come back from the Global Housing Technology Challenge in India with Prime Minister Modi, who are trying to build 10 million homes by 2022. This construction technology uses 70% less, uh, less CO2 and 99% less water. Did you know that 9% of all water is used for the construction industry? In Namibia, they've just got a state of emergency for drought. As I've mentioned previously at the beginning, 36% of all CO2 that's been emitted, the one trillion tons that gave us a one degree rise, comes from construction. 8% of that comes from concrete alone. So this, and also the local acceptability, the local infrastructure, because there's a lightweight panel, will enable us, on average, to reduce CO2 in the wall panel by 70%. And as an example of the speed, well, the unit in Namibia would have taken two months traditionally. We did it in three hours. The building material itself, as I've just mentioned. So then it comes to energy. What have we factored in energy? That white tile right there is the first of its kind manufactured in the UK smart integrated solar cladding panel. That is 14% efficient electricity. So now we've created the hermetically sealed ultra box that has the best thermal performance, hurricane proof and flood proof. We have then solar cladded the exterior in 14% efficient electrical energy and added solar slate, producing around about eight kilowatts of electrical power. In a direct Namibian sunlight, that's 80 kilowatt hours on average a day. In the UK in winter in January, that's eight kilowatt hours. And our house used 2.5 kilowatt hours on average per day. Then we have the home intelligence. Isn't everyone in this room sick of having an Alexa, a Samsung Hub, a Philips Hue, smart things, all these different apps, all these different programs, all these different tools? We are working with Samsung now because when I was developing this system, I was like, how do we make this intelligent? How do we make this thing smart without hardwiring Cat6 cable and increasing the cost? The whole point of this is to make accessible quality housing available to the world. Well, we had to, in we had to invent a multi-communication device and manufacture hardware from blinds to lights to security systems. So when you go into an utopian home, you say, hey, eSmart, set cinema mode. And it will automatically put down your blinds, dim your lights, and put on your Amazon Prime, uh, Amazon Alexa, we start playing your favorite thing with your Amazon Fire Stick on the TV. Now we have our construction method, we have our energy generation method, and we have our smart technology as key principles. So the key system facts, it has an 80 ton exceptional strength loading, 825 kilonewtons. That means it can be stacked 14 stories independently with no support. It's got a 0.13U value. It, just so you know, the best new homes in England built out of any system that have 500 mil layers thick and 0.16. This is a 90 kilogram panel that can be lifted by two guys and clicked together and automatically have that. It can handle winds in excess of 400 mile an hour. Hurricane Irma was 275. It's got a file structural resistance of 66 minutes, which puts it as class leading. The ultra air tightness at 0.07 PA makes it passive. And again, it's lightweight. We trained local Namibians that lived in a shanty town that couldn't read how to click this system together in three hours. Speed and quality. So what are the benefits of the future of utopian homes? What is the benefits of building sustainable homes? Well, one, low to zero carbon. Two, air purification. We go by an energy plus system. Passive doesn't really work, it's passive house system. What we're focusing on is maximizing the energy you generate and minimizing the energy you use internally. Daylight mimicry, to mimic daylight using an LED lighting system that's controlled by eSmart. It makes you feel like it's warm even when it's not. Sustainability in the reduction of CO2 from every component part, including local manufacturing and delivery, and complete air control. It's intelligent, so it fits the next generations. We use renewable energy, so we don't kill the planet. It's scalable. We had a 2,000 home go live already in Ellesmere Port. We have a micro facility that we can set up in less than three months that will produce 500 houses. We have plans for five micro facilities in the UK, two master facilities in the next 24 months. We have one master facility going into Kuwait. We have one master facility going to Wabish Bay. That brings us a circle with a few more micro facilities across Sao Paulo and across California, around about 15 to 20,000 units globally with a global standardized next generation system in the next 24 months. How does it work local delivery? It's all about bringing the raw materials in and locally producing. We then locally deliver. We locally train. We locally develop, creating local economy. Our goal through Utopia is to create an economic and environmental space where every single individual can manufacture and make benefits through their economies and benefits through their jobs locally, sustainably, 
in the vicinity of their region. So the team, I've got a bit of an exclusive here. So, so Steve Howard has just joined our board. To, use of that, to those of you that may not know, Steve Howard was the IKEA Sustainability Director through their, terminal, through their term years. He also was the person that put the coalition together, We Mean Business. We Mean Business was the single responsible company that allowed the Renewable 100 scheme to be put across Mars, Coca-Cola, Google and Apple. Steve has now joined our board to help us create a more global sustainable economy running our Autopia system. And then there are existing board members. There's myself as CEO and President Founder, Lord Fink, uh, previous CEO of Man Group, uh, and one of the best philanthropists this country's seen uh, for enabling new tech. Andrew Southern, who is one of the fast-paced uh, developers in this country, one of the leads of real estate, who is help helping us isolate and, and facilitate micro eco-villages all around the country to create an integrated network. We then have an array of other people that enable us to make this goal happen. Stephen Avia, Alex Fink, Mark Lewis, Steve Bluff, Lee McCardle, Alex Rius, and Alani Milburn. Our key partners in this. In July, uh, July, August, end of August, uh, sorry, beginning of August, end of July, we are going to be building the new house at BRE's Innovation Park, which is, called, uh, which is going to be accredited BPS 7014. It's a new global accreditation scheme that will integrate every best component about MMC into one building, and we will be the first company globally to secure that accreditation. We have the four wall panel, we have Daikin as our lead partner for HVAC, as I've previously mentioned, and we have our own economic environment engineering company, which allows us to create more sustainable internal environments. Our plans, you've pretty much heard enough about our plans already, and I'm gonna try to keep it short and sweet. Our plans are, in Europe, we already have had, been, have had project, projects since 2015. Uh, by the end of 2019, we will have an Orlando pilot and a California pilot. In South America, we plan to build in Sao Paulo at the end of this year. The e-affordable unit was built recently and we are branching out across the six other states in Southern Africa. Oceania, we are planning to build in 2020 an uh, earthquake-proof house. And in Asia, we've already entered with the Indian government. Thank you very much for your time today and I hope that we can build a more sustainable future together.